So yeah, we're going up now to hit upper body. So bench, secondary bench day, and some heavy upper body work, you know? Uh, yeah, it's late as well. I, I decided today, I actually intentionally went later. You know, I got home from work, I was feeling a bit drained. I was a bit sleep deprived and you know, I woke up heavy as well. Uh, body weight was uh, on the, like, well not on the heavier side, it's maintained. I expect it to be lighter though, but I, I was up late last night until like 11 eating, which isn't ideal. And then I was up this morning at 6 a.m. So yeah, not ideal, man. But uh, yeah, as you can imagine, you know, body weight would be a bit heavier. I was eating potatoes like late at night. I wouldn't recommend eating that late, by the way. You know, try get your food in two hours before sleep to prevent sleep disruption. But, um, yeah. So, yeah, and like when you're sleep deprived as well, generally your stress will be higher. All right, so there's, there's a correlation there between stress and sleep. I'm going to actually put in a little paper somewhere here that, or maybe a few papers just to uh, back up my bullshit, but... Yeah, stress and sleep are correlated, so generally if you're sleep deprived, you'll be more stressed out. And if you're more stressed out, that will affect your sleep. So it's a vicious cycle. So you want to control that. You want to get good sleep, and you want to, you know, control the stresses in your life so you're not fucking stressed out all the time. Because, you know, stress will eat into your recovery, man, and prevent you from uh, making progress, be it, like, strength gains or fat loss. So that's a big one. Same with sleep, man. You need sleep for recovery. It's like one of the, you know, it's where you recover the most is during your sleep so um yeah got to I'll, I'll try it's friday night so i should uh um get a good sleep you know because i'm not doing anything who who does like if you're a lifter like you shouldn't really have plans on a friday night like you know most lifters don't have actually actually don't have social lives you know um so you're yeah, going to the gym on a friday night it'll be good as well because it'll be quiet up here so i'm looking forward to, the, to that session um yeah, so on the agenda, close grip again. You know, consistently doing the same movements for progressive overload. Close grip, two by two. Mid grip, two by six. And I, I'll try to uh, hit the weights I did earlier in the week on mid grip for sets of five. So I'm liking the mid grip. I feel like it's benefiting my bench and I'm liking the close grip as well. So I'm going to attempt a 155 for a double or maybe two doubles and then back down work. And then I'm going to Probably change a few of the, uh, you know, accessories I did last week. It's still sort of the start of the block, so I can just keep them in later into the next block then as well. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to do uh, the chest press machine. I feel like I'll just get more out of it rather than single arm uh, dumbbell press. Plus, the um, the topic of time constraint is still very relevant today because it is about 20 past 8 now and the gym closes at 10. So, still plenty of time to get a good session in. <coughs> Ooh. Um, what else what was I going to say yeah other than that I think I'll keep all the movements I did in last week um, that was a good session I like those uh, cross body single arm tricep push down pull downs whatever you want to call them they're fucking great man I haven't felt uh, the tricep sting like that in a while and uh, what else yeah yeah, when the, back to the topic of body weight, it's important to, you know, not jump the gun with your uh, calories, especially if you're, you know, not seeing progress. Like, body weight can be dictated by a lot of things, um, you know, how late you eat at night, your sleep, obviously your calorie intake and your, your output, um, and a few other things, how much sodium you intake, you know, how much water you're consuming. Uh, you know, and sodium and water sort of go hand in hand. If you're having a lot of sodium, you'll probably hold on to a bit more water, you know. When we're doing the water cuts for the nutrition clients, uh, you know, we load them up with water and sodium. And then we take that all out, like, gradually. So we just take it out to the point where they're probably having, like, fuck all water a day, like zero water and minimal sodium. So they're not holding on to anything. And so they just piss everything out. It's like a super compensation effect where you're, like, uh, you know, you're your body still thinks you're drinking heaps of water so you're still pissing it out even days after you've finished water loading and then once you've weighed in whatever you just load back up on water and salt and electrolytes and and carbs so you want dextrose in there and then yeah but yeah i'm well fueled now anyway for the session so i've got uh, some good electrolytes in uh, uh plenty of water in today 
and um, yeah, pretty much all my macros for carbs for the day. I had a you seen the banging pesto I had, you know, that's actually on my Instagram page. The get get to my Instagram page from the, the t whatever in the description. You can also sign up for coaching in the description if you want the uh, nutrition coaching or coaching by myself. So do sign up uh, and don't uh, you know waste your potential by not signing up to a good solid coach. Anyways, folks, I'm just at the gym now, so let's go in and get it. All right. All right, first working set, going down 155 on it. Did 70, 120, 140, 150, and now 155 for a double. So let's see how it moves. It's a bit hard to predict, man. Like the lockout gets fucking hard quick. It's quick off the chest, though. When it comes to mid grip, though, it's a bit easier to predict. So I knew I probably knew it was going to be a bit hard. I didn't go for 145. Just stuck at 140. Made it move a bit easier than last week. Probably do the same again next week. Anyways, final set now. 135. Mid grip, pinky just inside the ring. So. plates on this fucking conversion press machine it's like a fly almost as well yeah let's go for nine to ten reps i don't know Right. 
dip machine next. It's nice to have like a dip movement that's fixed. You know, we got the fucking converging chest there, you know. You think it pecks. Like you think of, you know, horizontal like adduction of the arm, which is, you know, bringing the arm out in front and across the body. And then, you know, stretching the pecs in this as well, like with uh, when you're up here and then getting a lot of tricep action there. So a few good movements there. And uh, the person training in the gym with these types of machines. But anyway, three plates on each side here. So two for like 12 or more reps. Starting here with 90 kilos, or 85, I think. Sorry, this is easy. I'll go up. But yeah, try to get like nine or ten. Yeah, trying to spend longer in that uh, end position. Get a good feel for it. All right, now the other side. Probably go heavier, man. Feels a bit light. Yeah, very easy. You struggle to feel your back like I did. You well used to. Yeah, I used to always struggle with my back, man. You know, straps are a good option because grip isn't the limiting factor then. You know, if you're training, trying to train your lats to failure and your grip is going, it's, it's no help. So, yeah, use them. You know, row elbow to the hip, lead with the elbow. Don't initiate with the arm. You wanna, you know, lead, guide the elbow to the hip. That's a good cue. Same with pull downs, man. Just guide, guide the elbow down first. Don't just yank it down. It's gonna take it away. So, take it away from the, the lats in the back. Another one is you're probably just lacking the musculature there to actually feel anything. So if you actually train with good technique for a while and get stronger in a calorie surplus, you'll probably build muscle and be able to feel your back a bit better. So you'll develop that connection over time. But uh, next day anyway, I've upped the weight. So 90 kilos aside. <laughs>
you sort of lean into the side that you're pulling with as well. It's called a horizontal abduction of the trunk. You'll probably feel your lats as well. It's another good cue. A few little cues there for you to work with and develop a better back. We just got the 10 minute warning, so onto the isolations real quick. Car light was left on, this light while I was in the gym, so hopefully the car battery isn't dead. You might be able to see my breath. But yeah, good session man. Have a good pump now because I had to squeeze in fucking eight sets of isolation work in ten minutes, but 
sometimes you just have to squeeze it in, man. That's the way it goes. You know, from a progress, progressive overload standpoint, probably not ideal, but, you know, I did one, like, it was mainly the biceps. The other movements, I was actually able to still progress the amount of reps I did, so, you know, it was only the one bicep set, the second set that, you know, I could have done with a bit more rest time because, you know, I only got eight reps. The first set, I got fucking 16. So, yeah, short rest time. Super setting face pulls with biceps is probably not ideal either. But, but, yeah, pretty pleased with that session, man. I had a really fucking good chest pump after those uh, presses, the, the conversion ones. So, going to go home now and finish the 500 calories I have left and maybe finish my steps for the day with the dog. And then chill out and watch some television with my beloved girlfriend but um yeah no physique update today but hopefully tomorrow I'll wake up nice and light so especially after training later and not eating so late and getting a better sleep i think i, I should be on the cards for a, a lighter way in but we'll see if not we might need to adjust the calories but we'll wait another few days see how the body weight uh responds it could just be you know stress and other variables so I think that's it for the vlog though i don't really have anything else to report on you seeing the session it was good and i like that i like training at that time maybe not as late but you know when it's quieter because there's less interruption with the audio and you know probably less copyright i feel like i'm getting uh the, the views are getting tanked because of the some of the copyright claims that are on the videos but you know apparently it doesn't affect your views but i beg to differ because all my own copyrighted like all my videos without copyright claims are uh They've done way better, gotten hundreds of more views than the ones with claims. So I'll figure it out anyways. Just make sure you subscribe to me. So um, I'd really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, thanks folks. I'll get you in the next video. Peace.